All right, here we are on our final day of beaches. We're on page 72, chapter 2, lesson 3. This was the lesson called Beaches. And now we are on Beach Issues. Beach Issues. Okay, capital B, E, A, C, H, Issues, capital I, S, S, U, E, S. Switching back to our pencil. Like many other places, beaches face many challenges. Beach pollution is a problem in every coastal state in the United States today. Okay, so pollution is an issue or a problem. P-O-L-L-U-T-I-O-N, pollution. Polluted water is one of the major causes. Rivers and streams may carry pollutants into the oceans, which in turn wash them onto beaches. After a heavy storm, overflowing sewers may dump untreated wastes into rivers. Oh, that sounds disgusting. Runoff picking up pollution from the ground will also make its way to the ocean. Okay, so if you think about all this stuff we have learned about runoff and water collection and rivers, let's go back to page 58, okay? Imagine there is a city right here next to this river. And let's imagine that cars are driving on the roads. Well, some of those cars are going to drip some oil, right? Let's imagine there are factories here that are using chemicals, then maybe they accidentally spill some on the ground. Let's imagine there are farms over here and they spray fertilizer on the ground to help the plants grow. Well, some of the oil on the streets gets washed away during a storm and goes into the storm drains. The storm drains have to go somewhere just like tributaries, all those storm drains collect water and run downhill and eventually get to a river. All that water that's being sprayed on the ground with all the fertilizer in it for the plants and the crops and the orchards, some of that leaches down into the groundwater and moves over here to the river. And all that river flowing washes all that gunk down into the ocean. Think about all the trash that you see on the streets and on the corners. Even if it's just leaves and branches from the trees people have in their yards and when fall comes, the leaves fall down to the ground, right? The trees go dormant for the winter. All those leaves get washed down to the river and all get washed out into the ocean eventually. So all that gunk in our cities gets collected and concentrated and intensified in these rivers. So the rivers become polluted. Then the rivers wash out into the ocean well, the ocean gets polluted. Okay, now back to beaches. As we learned, here we go, right here. Remember we talked about how the river water comes out into the ocean, but the ocean waves can sometimes push stuff back up onto the beach. So if you ever find trash on the beach, that's what happened. It flowed down a river or down a little stream, got washed by the currents and the waves, and it got pushed back up onto the shore. That's why when you go to the beach, you see kelp and seaweed all over the place and big giant piles and all those tiny little flies are on those piles of seaweed and kelp. All that stuff is getting washed up on shore by the waves pushing it up onto the beach. Okay, let's come back and see what is super important that we need to write down from that little section. So, rivers and streams carry pollutants, right? Pollution. Carried, C-A-R-R-I-E-D, by, B-Y, indent, rivers, R-I-V-E-R-S, and, down three down, streams, S-T-R-E-A-M-S. So pollution gets carried by rivers and streams to ocean, O-C-E-A-N. So just like sediment gets eroded and transported and then deposited, all the pollution gets collected, eroded and washed away down the rivers and streams, and just like the sediment, it collects and deposits in different places. Okay. Oh, here we go. Pollution carried by runoff. R-U-N-O-F-F. -F. Remember that word from before. So pollution gets carried away by the runoff. The rivers and streams go to the ocean. Okay, petroleum can destroy a beach ecosystem quickly. Spills from offshore oil wells or oil tankers do not happen often, 
but when they do, the effects can be devastating. If the oil reaches the beach, then animals, plants, rocks, and sand all become coated in thick layers of oil that are hard to remove. So petroleum is another word for oil or gasoline, basically. So when there's an oil spill, everything gets coated in a slick thing of oil. And if you have ever seen uh, your dad or your uncle or uh, your mom or your tia change the oil on their car, and then you see how dirty their clothes are and how oily their hands are and how hard it is to wash that stuff off, that's what's going on here with oil spills. So if oil's covering the rocks, well now the algae have nothing to collect and connect to, so you can't grow algae. Now some of the little shellfish suck in that oil and die because they don't want oil, they want water. The bird's feathers get covered in oil, so they can't fly because it's all thick and heavy. Bird's feathers have to be very dry and fluffy. Okay, let's go ahead and write that down. Oil spills, O-I-L, spills, S-P-I-L-L-S, -L -L -S, rare, R-A-R-E, so in other words, they don't have, happen very often, but they can still be very devastating. D-E-V-A-S-T-A-T-I-N-G. So even though oil spills are rare, they are still devastating. Um, thick, T-H-I-C-K, comma, hard, H-A-R-D, to remove, R-E-M-O-V-E. -E. It's because the oil is thick and hard to remove. Many Californians dream of owning a home right next to the Pacific Ocean. However, construction along beaches can disrupt the natural shaping of that beach by the ocean. Construction can also damage or destroy salt marshes and other sensitive beach ecosystems. Okay, so if you build a house on a cliff, and that cliff gets washed away, guess what? Your house is getting washed away and falling in the ocean too. Well, then you're going to spend a bunch of money to try to save it, but you're actually preventing the beach from changing in its natural way that it would normally. So, construction along beaches disrupts natural shaping, can damage ecosystems. Okay. Let's see. Beach, B-E-A-C-H. Construction, C-O-N-S-T-R-U-C-T, construct, I-O-N, construction. Beach construction prevents, P-R-E-V-E-N-T-S, indent, natural, N-A-T-U-R-A-L, N-A-T-U-R-A-L, natural, shaping, S-H-A-P-I-N-G. <coughs> comma, damages, D-A-M-A-G-E-S, -E D-A-M-A-G-E-S, damages, ecosystems, E-C-O-S-Y-S, T-E-M-S, ecosystems, where the plants and animals live. Okay, what does that mean? Well, that means we need to construct things farther back from the beach. Notice that when you go to somewhere like Pismo Beach or Morro Bay, for example, all of the buildings that are built are behind on the other side of that big hill and mound of sand. So they leave the sandy beach side to do its own thing. The only thing they build on that side is one pier to go walk out on and fish on. Everything else is behind the bar of sand or behind that big sand dune. To protect beaches, the state government sponsors the California Coastal Commission. The state has also established several beaches as parks and nature reserve. Beaches are special places, the meeting of Earth's land, air, and oceans. Keeping beaches clean and healthy is an important goal. Okay, so governments protect beaches. Government, G-O-V-E-R-N, govern, ment, M-E-N-T. Government protects, P-R-O-T-E-C-T-S. So the government protects beaches. And I think this is really interesting. They call it a special place, a meeting of the land, air, and ocean. Where else in the world do you have land meeting water, both rivers and oceans? In other words, the rivers are fresh water and the oceans are salty water. And the air, and there's a lot of air movement and wind at the beach. So it's a very important place where all of these things come together. 
Okay, so special meeting place. Special, S-P-E-C-I-A-L, meeting, M-E-E-T-I-N-G, place, P-L-A-C-E. All right, can we answer, oh, picture first. Oil can wash ashore far away from where it is spilled. Cleaning oil spills is a difficult but necessary task. So oil and water don't mix. That's a common, famous phrase, right? Oil and water don't mix. Oil is a little bit less dense than water. It actually floats on the surface. So it's easy for the water to carry the oil away to other places and spread very far and get to many different beaches. Okay? How does pollution on beaches compare to pollution in other places? Huh, how does it compare? Okay, well, pollution on beaches is especially important because beaches are a special meeting place where a lot of animals, a lot of plants, and all the different kinds of water and land all meet together. So beaches are particularly important in terms of pollution. Also, beaches are different from pollution in other places because the pollution is getting carried by runoff and it is concentrating or getting collected in the rivers and streams that go out to the ocean. So beaches can sometimes have more pollution and more trash than other places since it's all getting collected and concentrated there. All right, so we're able to answer that question using our notes, so that means we got all the information we need. Okay, take a little brain break, pause the video, go get a little drink of water, maybe get a little snack, and then we're going to do our phase two processing and highlighting. Okay, you need your yellow highlighter or you could use a colored pen or a colored pencil or a crayon, something colorful to catch your eye, right? Now remembering from before we did highlighting but you can put stars next to things, you can underline, you can question mark, you can add for information. Basically do whatever makes sense to your brain. For me, my brain I just like to see something highlighted in bright color, or I like to add something new that I forgot. Okay, let's look at our visual summary. Remember, these are the things they think are so important that they tell you them again at the end of the lesson. Erosion and deposition work together to constantly reshape shorelines. Okay, let's go see what we have about erosion, deposition, and shaping shorelines. Oh, this section was called shaping shorelines. All right, let's go look at that. What do we have here? Waves, wind, and salt. Erosion. Oh, there's that word, erosion. Headlands can become cliffs, which can become sea caves. When a sea cave gets all the way through both sides, it becomes an arch, and it can fall and crumble, turn into a sea stack. Sand slash large sediment deposits. Oh, okay. Shorelines and beaches end up getting sand and other large sediment deposits, which turn into a beach. And there's that word, deposition, right? So, deposits. Let's highlight shaping shorelines because that's what they said, reshape shorelines. The beach is dynamic and changing. Yeah, constantly reshaping. So it's dynamic. It's constantly changing. Okay, what else did they say? Waves cause both deposition and erosion. What did we say about waves? Longshore current, parallel. Barrier islands can be huge, protect shoreline and from storms. They also provide a habitat. Here's waves. Okay, but we didn't say both, right? We have waves and erosion, but we didn't say about deposition or deposits. So sand or large sediment deposits. Let's draw an arrow from waves over here to deposits. So waves can do both. And off of that arrow, let's draw another one here to erosion to remind ourselves that basically it's doing both. And I'm going to kind of put like a little star right here just to draw my attention to my drawing. Okay, so what would we write as our summary? Shorelines are shaped by many agents. Remember that word agents? So let's use that word and highlight it to remind ourselves to use it. Shorelines are shaped by many agents, period. One major agent is waves, zoop, which causes both erosion and deposition. Ert. 
So, Zoop, the beach is dynamic or always changing. Okay. <coughs> so it's three short sentences, but it quickly tells us what we learned in that section. Okay, next. Changes in sea level also shape shorelines. All right, let's come over here. Let's look for changes in sea level. Oh, that was the name of the section. Hey, let's highlight that. Okay. They shape the shorelines. Let's see, they can move sediment. Shoreline and ocean floor affect tides. Oh, there's shoreline, there's tides, there's move sediment. Okay. Sea levels also change over thousands of years as the Earth's climate becomes warmer or cooler. Okay, we talked about that. Over history, if it's colder, you have more ice and it's lower. But if it's warmer, you have more water, so the water level's higher. Okay, so the sea level changes both in the short term and long term. Ert. In the short term, zoop, tides come in and out. Zoop, moving sediment and shaping the shoreline. Ert. In the long run over history, zoop, when the earth is colder, there's more ice, so the water level's lower. Ert. But when it's warmer, zoop, there's more water. Zoop, so the water level's higher. Ert. Okay, something like that. Now, beach sand can be made up of different types of minerals, rocks, plant remains, and shells. So, sand is made of these things. What is sand made of? Let's, let's see, what section was that? Oh, sand up close. Sand up close. There's a variety of sand. It depends on what's in your area. The grains are tiny. Um, California beaches are made of quartz and shell. So what did they say? Minerals, rocks, plants. So quartz is a mineral or rock. Shell is part of that. Plant remains they talked about. Okay. Different kinds of beach sand are common in different places. We said that. There's a variety of sand depending on your area. Okay, so instead of saying all this stuff about quartz and shell and plant remains, let's just use the words they have. Minerals, Minerals, M-I-N-E-R-A-L-S. Let's use that word, plant remains. So now I'm going to put, uh, like, I'm going to put a box around it to remind myself to really use that word and put a star over here. I'm going to put a star here. And you know what? I'm going to go to the red pen because I'm not seeing that clearly. So make a plus and then an X. Make a plus and then an X. They also said shells. Okay, let's go ahead and use that shells, a plus, then an X. So now I know I want to use those three words. So I'm going to say something like, there's a variety of sand in the world depending on the area you live in. Er, uh, sand is made up of minerals, zoop, uh, ain't, what do we say, artifacts or shells, something like that, zoop, and even plant remains. Er, Notice that I highlighted grain and tiny, but I didn't actually say that. So sometimes you'll highlight something and think it's important, but it won't end up in your summary. I don't know. Okay, that's everything in their visual summary. So that's everything we want in our summary. Do you notice their summary didn't include anything about beach issues? But that was an entire section. So we need to add one thing about beach issues. Beach issues, what is the issue for beaches? Pollution. And why is pollution an issue? Because all that pollution gets collected, right? So let's say something about the runoff. Okay, so uh, pollution is a major issue for beaches because it gets collected by runoff and runs downstream into the oceans. Yep, something like that. All right, let's go back and look at our vocabulary. Did we need to say arch, barrier island, beach, cliff, headland, sandbar, sea cave, sea stack, or spit at any point during our summary? I think the one super important one is beach. And it's all about how things get deposited there. The sand or the sediment gets deposited there, but also pollution can get collected there, right? So we're going to add that in our phase two processing and highlight it. 
pollution. And then we'll draw, let's say, pollution collects. C-O-L-L-E-C-T-S, pollution collects. Okay, that's how you phase two process. Use the summary they're already giving you. Find those things in here and highlight them. Add stuff that you're missing or clarify with better words. Rather than being super specific with every single thing, generalize it into minerals, shells, and plant remains. Add things in the vocabulary words. Figure out which vocabulary words you definitely need to use. All right, we will write our paragraph together. Good job persevering with the growth mindset. And roar, Wildcats!